Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I want to show you how to link the controls of multiple instances of a plugin across multiple tracks in Logic Pro. This is not as simple in Logic Pro as it is in some other DAWs, but it is possible. It just takes a little bit of setup and requires that you have a MIDI controller. Any old MIDI keyboard will do the trick. Let's look at a practical example of when we might want to do this. I had this basic demo session that I created with just a few elements, a simple five mic live drum recording, a few percussion elements, and some synths. And in this breakdown section here, I want to apply a high cut filter effect to the drums. The easiest way to do this would of course be to create a track stack for the drums so that they are all being sent to an aux track and then apply the filter effect to all of the drum tracks at once by placing the EQ plugin on the aux track. And that certainly does work, but see if you can hear the issue I'm having with that method in this session. it doesn't filter the drum reverb. And that's because I'm sending the individual drum channels to the reverb aux. The filtering is happening on the drum aux track, not on the individual channels. Because of this signal flow, only the unfiltered sound is being sent to the reverb. Therefore, we're not getting a filter effect on the sound of the reverb itself. Now I could send the reverb aux tracks to the drum aux, but I'm using this same room reverb on my pad and I don't want the filter effect on that part of the reverb sound, just on the part that's coming from the drum mics. So our best option here is to apply the filter effect to each drum track individually. We could put the EQ plugin on the kick drum track, set the filter, and then copy that setting over to the other drum mics but that would just be a static filter effect. I want to automate some movement to this filter effect so we can rapidly unfilter during the fill at the end of the section to go along with those sweep effects. Again, we could write this automation on one channel and copy it to the others, but that's not ideal either. We want to be able to hear the full scope of the filtering effect while writing the automation to properly time that sweep. So that leaves us with only one option, link the control of the high cut frequency on each of these plugin instances together. How do we do that in Logic Pro? It may seem logical that this would be a setting found in the group tracks function of Logic Pro, but unfortunately you see here in the group settings, there's no option for plugins. Therefore, we don't need to enable a group at all to set this up. What we have to do instead is set up MIDI control of the parameter on one instance of the plugin and then use the environment to link that MIDI control across all of the drum tracks. Here's how to set it up. First, put the EQ plugin onto the first drum track. In this session, that's the kick drum. We need to place it in a slot that is available on all the drum tracks. So since the hat track has two plugins, we will put the EQ plugin for filtering on the third slot down on the kick track. That way we can copy it across to each track in the same slot. Also, it must be the only instance of this specific plugin on these tracks. Any EQ plugin will work to create this effect, but the plugin linking will only occur on the first instance of the plugin. So since we already have a channel EQ plugin here on the hi-hat track, we have to use a different plugin to do our filter effect. I'm going to choose Fab Filter Pro Q3, but again, any unique EQ plugin will work. Let's set up Pro Q3 on the kick drum track and set our high cut filter. 
Going to start around 1K, so it's very audible. I like to increase the Q to get this little resonant bump here. This helps accentuate the filtering effect, especially when automating the cutoff frequency. Then hold Option and click and drag on the plugin in the mixer to copy it to all of the other drum tracks that we want to affect. Now we need to set up MIDI control of the filter frequency. To do this, open the EQ plugin on the first track and then hit Shift Option K on your keyboard to bring up the controller assignments window. This is the window where you can assign any parameter in Logic Pro to a physical control on your MIDI keyboard. For this effect, I'm going to use this first fader here on my MIDI keyboard, but any control will do, a knob, a fader, or even the modulation wheel. Just some aspect of your MIDI controller that allows you to send a range of values. Basically anything other than buttons or the actual piano keys. To tell Logic which plugin parameter you want to assign, simply adjust it slightly with your mouse. Then come to the controller assignments window and hit this key in the bottom right called learn mode. With this button selected, simply move the control on your MIDI keyboard that you want to assign to the plugin parameter. And there you go, now you can see when I move this fader on my MIDI keyboard, the high cut filter sweeps around the frequency spectrum. Awesome, but that's only one step. And this is only controlling the EQ plugin on the kick drum. Now we have to link this control to the other tracks. And to do that, we use the environment. Hit Command-0 on your keyboard to open the environment. Now, I know the environment might look like a scary place, but don't worry, what we have to do in here is quite simple. The environment is the window in Logic Pro that gives you complete control over your MIDI setup. It's actually a very powerful tool if you have a complex setup of MIDI-based components, despite it still looking like Logic 7 for no good reason. But all we need to do in the environment is to virtually link our drum tracks together. To do this, we're going to find our kick drum track in the channel strip view and then come right to the top right hand corner of it and find the little output logo. If we click there and then drag our mouse, it creates a virtual cable. We can then drag this cable to any other channel strip to link the MIDI of these two tracks together. For this plugin linking technique, we want to link our drum tracks in the order that they appear in the main window. The environment window is organized differently, so be sure to follow the order from the main or mixer window. I actually find it very helpful to first solo the tracks in the main window so that I have the yellow solo icon as a visual reference in the environment of which tracks I'm looking for. We're going to click on that output logo in our kick drum track and drag the cable to the top of our snare track. Once the snare track lights up, let go of the mouse. Now you see we have this virtual cable going from the right side, the output side of our kick drum to the left side, the input side of our snare drum track. Don't be fooled by the fact that the input connection looks suspiciously close to the output connection on the previous track. It is in fact connected to the snare drum track here, not to the room mic track. Then we're going to repeat this process to connect all of our drum tracks. Snare goes to hat, hat goes to overhead, and overhead goes to room one. Again, you're going in the order that the tracks are in, in the main window. There we go. And now if I open up all of these EQ plugins and then move the fader on my MIDI controller, you see that all the high cut filters move together. Do note, you have to use the MIDI controller for them all to move together. Now it's time to write our automation in. And for this, we only have to enable automation on the first track, the kick drum track. Once the automation is written there, the MIDI controller will follow that automation and therefore control the plugins on the other tracks. Change the kick drum track into latch mode and perform the automation. We will be able to hear the effect on all of the tracks simultaneously as we do this. And note, the reverb is now getting filtered as well. Now, if I play it back with the plugin windows open, we see that the MIDI controller is moving along with the automation on the kick drum track and thereby controlling the plugins on all the other tracks. And be 
because we may want to automate the bypass of this EQ band as well so that it doesn't affect the other sections of our song, we can assign a button on our MIDI controller, say this solo button here, to the bypass of the high cut filter on the kick drum track. And we use the exact same process as we did before, using learn mode in the controller assignments window. Then automate the filter on and off on our kick drum track, and because we've already linked the MIDI of the drum tracks together, all of these automation moves on this plugin will link up. Certainly, it's a bit more complicated than it needs to be in Logic Pro, but it is possible. And it's a great opportunity to dip your toes into MIDI control mapping and the environment. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.